Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to meet it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Now, I wasn't paying attention there. And the reason I wasn't paying attention is because when we sit here in the studio during the breaks, sometimes our engineer Art is sitting there playing, like, <laughs> music drop-ins and things. And after a while, you're just thinking he's none of this stuff is live on the air. He's just playing stuff here in the studio. He was playing the Jack Silver theme music, for example. We're just sitting here listening to this because I was just on the phone with Jack, and so he played Jack's theme music. And he was playing some other little things here in the studio, and I'm like not paying any attention. And then the theme of the show comes on. And I'm thinking we're just listening to this, you know, like it's one of the other things he's playing. And then our producer, Gary, looks over at me and says, That's you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm on the air. I got to go back to doing the show. Oh, oh, boy. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again. Well, I'm trying to get it together again. Are you, uh, are you looking at pictures of the house again? Well, you know, we just finally closed the deal, which was dragging on because the owners of the house did not want to give me any credit for any of the repairs that needed to be done. And I almost had to bail on the house deal. And we, we just resolved those issues. So I'm back to looking at pictures of the house. I, the last couple of days, these guys know about this. I haven't talked about it on the air. But I had stopped looking at pictures of my house because I was starting to believe this deal was not going to go down. That it was going to, you know how things fall out of escrow? I thought this was going to fall out of escrow. And uh, literally within the last 10 minutes, we resolved all the issues. And I'm going to uh, to escrow. It's done. It's a done deal. So I'm back to look at those photos. Yeah, if you must know. I've got them all right here. The northern compound of the Tom Likas Empire. The 20 acres. The 5,000 square feet of home. Yes. We're full speed ahead once again. You know, I, I, how stupid was I? You know, I... Uh, before I went on vacation, you know, it was Christmas. I did my last news show. For those of you who don't pay attention, just like I wasn't at the beginning of this hour, you keep listening to the reruns thinking I'm here live 52 weeks a year. You know, uh, December 21st was the last news show I did of 2007. And then I had uh, the following Monday was Christmas Eve. And then uh, Christmas Day. And then I flew off to Costa Rica. And uh, in that period of time, I'd do some Christmas shopping, and I was packing for my trip. And also, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to buy a house. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm, you know, I've got this great realtor. She's done a really good job, but uh, she's extremely conscientious. And here's how conscientious she is. Like, it didn't matter how many pieces of paper I initialed or signed. There always needed to be another piece of paper initialed or signed. And so it's like December 23rd, December 24th. She's on the phone. With me. We just need to get this one more piece of paper signed. Finally, I'm like, you know, it's going to be Christmas, and then I'm going to the airport. The, the Christmas night is when I flew out to Costa Rica. I took a red eye at 10 p.m. on Christmas Day. She leaves me a message. She says... Oh, uh, I'll take your call on Tuesday, Christmas Day. She would take my call on Christmas Day if I had questions about the paperwork. I finally had to call her up. I said, look, if your plan is to send carrier pigeons to Costa Rica with papers to be signed, I am not looking at this. I am not going to look at this for the next two weeks. It's not happening, okay? 
Uh, uh, this is going to have to be delayed. I can't do this. I'm leaving on vacation. I think I have initialed 7,000 pieces of paper. And, of course, I've read every one of them thoroughly. Not really. I said to my attorney, I let him read them thoroughly. It all looked good to him. So it all looked good to me. So, of course, I came back, and as usual, everybody's running around like their pants are on fire. You know, I was gone for 10 days and couldn't sign any pieces of paper, and everybody's freaking out. It's like, calm down. This is a, a $3 million house. Are you kidding me? And you, you know what? Uh, I'm, when I get back, I'm going to buy the house. Believe me, I've already initialed and signed all these pieces of paper. I'm going to do it, okay? Got my $78,000 deposit. Now get with the program. Relax. I gave you my money. I put the deposit down. Now stop freaking out. So I come back here, and of course... It's like when you come back to school and they assigned a term paper while you were gone and now you've got one day to do it. Oh, now that you're back. Uh, did you check your email? Yes, you've got to sign off on the request for repair credit and you have to sign uh, this document and that document. And there's like all these documents had backed up in my mailbox. And everybody was like wondering why I hadn't signed. Even though I told everybody I was going to Costa Rica for 10 days, everybody wondering why I haven't signed these papers. And then, of course, they start panicking like I'm going to drop out of the deal. On top of that, while I was gone, I guess they found out how much it was going to cost to repair the little cracks and little things that exist in every house when you sell it. And they they all start flipping out. They didn't want to pay for that. It's like, what do you expect for $3 million? You got a deal here. The sellers of the house actually like sent me a letter telling me that like, like I was getting some really great deal. I got this letter saying, you know, this house in a in a different market, this house would be selling for a much higher price. I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. And if I wanted to pay more for your house, I would have bought it in 2003. So we were uh, arguing over, uh, you know, whether I should get money to put proper GFI outlets in the kitchen that, that were never put in properly. Things like that. Stupid little things. So I was this close to dropping out of the deal. And then everybody came together and money was found somehow. Amazing when you spend $3 million, somehow they scraped up a few bucks. And now my repairs will be paid for. And so uh, second weekend in February is when I take possession of this place. And then the trouble really begins when the neighbors find out who's moved in next door. <laughs> Wait till my boys come to the house. Wait till they see the new infinity pool I'm putting in, like the one I saw in Costa Rica. One whole wall of the pool will be glass. You'll be able to see whatever we're doing underwater. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if there'll be a stripper pole at the new place, Dean. I have no idea. You don't need a pole. I got 20 acres you can run around naked. Do you really need a pole for that? Seriously. Got your stripper pole right here. Anyway, full steam ahead. I'm moving to the house. I'm not moving in. I'm not moving to, 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 to the Santa Barbara County. I'm just buying a home for weekend and vacation use. People already say to me, Woo, did you sell your house in Hollywood? Are you... No. This is like for, uh, this house is for all the recreational things I can't do at my current house. I, I, I live in a house in the hills that's at a 60 degree angle. I can't put a pool in there. I can't have a tennis court. There's no room for a guest house. All that stuff I'm going to do uh, in Santa Barbara. For God's sake. Roll down the road and see what Oprah's doing. <laughs> Speaking of rolling down the road. But uh, nonetheless, there you go. That's the deal. Yes, I am looking at pictures of the house again. Looks pretty good, too. 
All right, it's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on my mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air. Anything that's on your mind. I think you told me anything that's on my mind, too. Anything at all. It can be anything we discussed on the air. See, I'm thinking about the house. And that leads back to my mind, of course. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello to Diana on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Listen, I just heard on the radio that you're going that you went to Costa Rica, and we're going to be going in October, and we were going to go to the Caribbean side. Did you go to the Pacific or the Caribbean? I was on the Pacific side. Oh, you did? Okay. Did you hear anything good about the Caribbean side while you were there? Did I hear anything good about the, uh, anything good about, about what? About the Caribbean side. About the Caribbean side. Right. Nothing specific. Oh, okay. Because I heard it was a little bit more tropical and a little bit more jungle. Well, I was in the middle of a rainforest. It couldn't be any more jungle <laughs> than where I was. <laughs> and you just went about a month ago? No, I just got back. And how was the weather? Well, keep in mind, you are eight degrees from the equator, eight oh, degrees okay. north of the equator. Having said that, the weather was remarkably comfortable when you consider oh. how humid it should have been and how hot it should have been. Uh-huh. Of course, it helps when you have an infinity pool in your kitchen. Absolutely. Anytime it got sticky, I just jumped in. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to ask. Thanks a lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Diana. Appreciate the call. And what is this, the travel show? Believable. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great. Uh, like a lot of guys here in L.A., I'm uh, very attracted to women who are performers, comedians, dancers. You know, people on stage or in the entertainment business. And this week, I have the opportunity to see somebody who uh, kind of have the hots for and maybe been talking a little bit to on MySpace Live. And my hope was that I would be able to kind of go backstage after the show to know her better. My question for you is, what is the move? How do you approach somebody who you're attracted to because she's a performer, but I don't, but you don't want to be... What kind of performer is she again? What kind of performer? She's a comedian. Oh, boy. What's she look like? What does she look like? Uh, well, let me say this. For a comedian, she's pretty hot. That's, For oh, that's a, pretty uh, bad. For a model, she's probably not that hot. But, you know, uh, then again, I'm, I'm a comic book artist. So for a comic book artist, you know, I look okay. I mean, are there, any, are there any, first of all, are there any funny female comedians? That's question number one. Uh, yeah, they are, there are, but really? most of them aren't very funny. Right. And number two, are there any attractive? I'm not. I'm not. Are there any attractive female comedians? All right. How about are there any attractive female comedians? Well, see, if she's not funny, that means you're going to end up having to support this somewhere down the line. Why would I be interested in her if she wasn't attracted to me? Well, no, no. Not whether she's attracted to you. Is she attractive? That's what I'm saying. Why would I be interested in her if she was not attractive to me? She, oh, I find oh, attractive, attractive yeah. to you. You do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Lisa Lampanelli is funny, but I'm not attracted to her, so I'm not my space in her. That, there's an example, Lisa Lampanelli. Right. She's a big, fat pig. But this girl is not a pig. And, she's uh, attractive. You know, I mean, look, let me say, the fact that she's funny and she's on stage, that makes her more attractive, like a lot of people, you know? Really? An attractive female comedian? No, the, she'll, the, she'll, my, my question for you never is, make you, it. what is the move so that I'm not a mark, so that I'm not just a fan? I don't want her to toss an 8x10 gloss. Well, you're not a fan. Away. You've never seen her perform. Have I seen her, like, uh... Have you seen her perform? Her? Do you yeah. know who she is? Like, is this somebody well-known? Uh, not at Chris Rock level, but, you know, she's well enough known that you can get to know her a little bit by, you know, seeing her online and stuff, but not so well known. That I mean, has she, been, has she been on The Tonight Show? No, she hasn't been Letterman? on The Tonight Show, Tom. Carson no, Daly? She on The Tonight Show that she would be out of my league. Well, yeah, out of your league how? Well, I mean, dude, you don't... Why do you assume that? Advice ...on how to date somebody who's been on The Tonight Show. Wait, wait a minute, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, yeah, you would, actually, because if yeah, she was... A, First of all, she was a hot chick. It was on the Tonight Show because she was a hot chick. Hot chicks are the easiest ones to get. Okay, so Tom, how do I get Aisha Tyler? 
No, I'm kidding, dude. Seriously. Well, my question for you. My she question was married you is, last time I talked to her. Yeah. My question for you is, I mean, she never how do me, you but... skirt that line between being a fan and being somebody who is, you know, her equal? A fan is somebody, a fan is somebody who has seen her work, which you haven't. Well, I mean, you see it online. What's more than... What's Come on. More than uh, you're, a fan, you're a fan of her of her work online? I'm quite frankly not interested in being her fan. I'm interested in being and her somebody, The point I'm trying to make is I, I think a fan is someone who has sat in the audience and paid to see you perform. Well, That's I'm a fan. A fan has bought your CD. But I thought like us 101, according to those rules, I shouldn't even have to go to see her perform. No, no, I mean, no I'm, I'm not saying ready. you should have to. I'm saying, bucket, I'm saying you're money. not a fan. You understand? You are not a fan. Oh, I see your point. Yes, you're right. I am not a fan. I'm a potential boyfriend. Uh, you're not even, no. I guess one of one students is not a potential boyfriend. You're a potential uh, uh, booty call. Okay. And by the way, good. by the way, any chick who's at nightclubs waiting to go on who isn't very successful probably doesn't go on until 1 a.m. anyway. And that means that she's going to probably, uh, you know, be in need about 2 a.m. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I should, like, you know, have the Patron ready and, you know. The full love pad with the purple bottoms up, everything already before I leave, or or uh, you know, be prepared to go over to her place late. So what do you do after the show? I come up to you, I come up to her, and I say, "Hey, uh, that was did she tell show. you to come down you and know? see her show?" Say again, I'm sorry. Did she tell you to come down and see her show? Yeah, she did. Did she put you on the list? No. Why not? Uh. I don't know. That's a good question. You'll have to ask her. But you, so you have, wait. I didn't, I didn't say. So I you have to say, pay. Hey, wait a minute. In order to meet this woman, you have to pay ten bucks at a two drink minimum to go see her. Thirteen, buddy. <laughs> it's okay, you, I got it. You know what I mean. She is. I'm she is it. happening. Uh, that's, uh, why, why do you? That's the thing, dude. She's not on the night show. It's not. You know. Well, you should be on the list. So you're saying the key, the big difference. Because, because uh, let me tell you something. She's, she's probably telling this to every guy on MySpace. She's probably telling this to every guy on MySpace. Come on down and see me. Yeah, of course. Come on down and see me. It's $13 to drink minimum. But but the point is, you are one of the other schmoes because you're paying like everybody else. Well, okay. All right. So you're saying that if you if you pay to see the girl, What you makes you think she has any interest in you? You're saying that uh, if you pay, then you're automatically disqualifying yourself. I'm saying, first of all, what made you think that she's interested in you? Oh, MySpace back and forth. You know, you know, MySpace back, back and know. forth. Come on. Dane Cook's on MySpace. So what? I mean, the point is. Well, I already had Dane Comedians Cook. use. Right. There you go. Comedians use MySpace to advertise their comedy shows. Yeah. And so if she is inviting you to come see her and then wants you to pay to get in? No, that's what I'm saying. We you can't. are one of the other Schmendricks. You are. Okay. Look, may maybe all of the emails back and forth have just been an elaborately constructed ploy for her to get one more paying customer. But that seems to Why be don't you just tell her? I mean, we're talking about a lot of time invested. Ask her, ask, just write back to her and ask her if you're going to be on the list and who you have to talk to to get in. Okay, so... Make her words, tell you she won't put you on the list. And then you have your answer. See, my idea was I wasn't even going to tell her that I was going. I mean, you know, I figured... I don't know. I figured it would be kind of a surprise, and that would be, you know... You're, you're acting call. like a boyfriend. You're not acting like a booty call. Mm. Well, stop with the surprises. right -o. So, in other words, my face would be like, hey, I'm going to be at your show when at whatever night. How about put me on the list? Yeah, yeah, who do I, am I on the list? Who do I have to talk to? Right on, right on. Just like that. And if she tells you there's no list, first of all, she's lying. There's always a list, because what happens if the, uh, you know, the development director for NBC shows up? I guarantee you there's a list. So, w once I'm talking to her, though, how do you skirt that line between a showing appreciation for what she does and... I'm telling you, don't like show appreciation. Yeah. I'm telling you, don't show appreciation for what she does. Uh. Comedians have very low self-esteem. They're very insecure. That's what I'm counting on, damn it. So tell her you don't, you're not a big fan of comedy. Tell her you... <laughs> I'm not a big fan of comedy. No. Well, that, how long am I going to be able to keep that up? I mean, that's kind of my business. You know, how long do you have to keep it up until you get her panties off? Oh, right on. Okay, so... See, words, stop I... acting like a boyfriend. Do you want? Are you looking for a relationship or to get laid? 
you know, quite frankly, at first get laid. And then if that goes well, we'll see where it goes from there. You know, we, we have many friends in the comedy industry who come in here, uh, not only the people who appear on the air, but all the people who work with them, okay? I know, the publicists, really the press, press people, the club owners, we deal with them all, okay? Right. And I don't think any of them will be offended if I tell you the following, okay? This is not a group of people who live in the suburbs... And and they 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 had their boyfriend and girlfriend and they they live these normal. We can't use that that term on the air, by the way. Uh, uh, but but the but here's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like we're talking about people here who many of them hate each other, <laughs> and and they've got is insecurity issues. Yeah. This is not girlfriend material. Even I, I don't even believe you need a girlfriend. But this is not girlfriend material. This is booty call material. Mm. It under okay. the best of circumstances. So, in other words, I should make no mention that I think she's funny. No, and by the way, you should never do that. Would you never give them a compliment? <laughs> okay, it, it's all about backhanded compliments. Hmm. That's, okay. that's so the kind words, of compliment words, you give. Like, I thought you were shorter online. <laughs> what uh, a surprise! Well, no, no, it, it would be things like. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what—I I, I don't really find female comedians funny, but for a female comedian, you were great. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, that's a backhanded compliment. Tom, I appreciate it. Real quick shout out to Boogie Shack Phil and the O Dime, and I love your show, and uh, I'll keep listening. Thank you. Thank you. The guy, he's so desperate to become a boyfriend of somebody who I just know in my heart. I don't know her name. I don't know. I know from my own experience, this person is going to be so screwed up. Gary knows the last aspiring comedian that I uh, had the hots for. How screwed up was that? Doesn't get any more screwed up. No, no. No, and you knew she was going to fail as a comedian because she was super hot. Well, especially when you're at that level of yeah. being a comedian, which is like the real entry level. Yes. You spend most of your life trying to get people to come and see you. That's You have to draw people. Right. That's how you get in with the club owners. That's how you, you uh, progress. You have to have people come and see you. So this guy... Is thinking that he's got a relationship because of this yes. woman is that's responding. like the stripper who gives you her cell phone right. number. I think she loves me. She wants to fill seats, right? She's got no interest in him. That's exactly right. And she spends the rest of her time fending off the club owners who want to nail her, right? On that uh, that sofa with the stuffing all hit out and knocked out of it. And you the, know this. I mean, if you're a hot chick in the, in the comedy club on the comedy club circuit, you're a rarity. Oh yeah. And so you're getting hit on by everything that walks. Yes. And who was the last hot chick who succeeded as a comedian? Who was the last chick that could... <laughs> <laughs> who was the last female comedian that succeeded? Lucille Ball. <laughs> there you go. And by the way, Lucille Ball had been hot at one time. Really? In the 30s. You ever see her in Ziegfeld Follies? She <laughs> was hot. I'll have to check that out. I'm, some good black and white uh, some good black rubbing and white material, footage. She, huh? looked, yeah, she looked pretty good back then, <laughs> 70 that. years ago. Holy moly. But, um, no, she was already uh, way over the hill by the time she did I Love Lucy. But I'm, I'm trying to think of a hot yeah. comedian who was funny. Or even a non Don't even one. say, don't yeah, even don't say even it. Say don't even say it. Don't send me down that road, Art. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. There's um, no hot female comedians. And any hot chick who aspires to be a comedian will ultimately fail. You get that Margaret Chunk, I mean Cho. Whatever happened to her? She ran out of AIDS benefits to appear at? What is she doing now? Who are some of the others? Oh, yeah, that Kathy Griffin. Very hot. Unbelievable. And Lisa Lampanelli. Who are the other female comedians? 
That's what I'm saying. I can't even think of one. <laughs> That's like looking for female talk show hosts. You know, the turkey neck, Dr. Laura, can you name another one? Actually, most um, most comedy club owners will tell you if you're a hot chick when you're trying to get into the business that it's just not going to work because people when they see a hot chick on stage they're not going to laugh they're thinking about doing you they're not they're not thinking about laughing at your material no it just doesn't work well plus the way uh, from what i understand from from male comics you go to a comedy club it's frequently date night and so any guy who starts staring at a hot chick on stage is going to get his uh he's going to get his cheek pinched or his uh, face slapped by the girlfriend or the wife it's just there's just no hope for that. Anyway, all right, there you go. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more of your telephone calls, and uh, of course, wide open telephones. We are all over the goddamn road. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM. Now, our next caller has a problem that I have had. I can relate to this. This is Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Doing great. That's great to hear. I'm a big admirer of, your, admirer of yours. I've got a lot of respect for you. First time, long time. Uh huh. Told myself I wasn't going to get nervous on the radio, but here goes. Um, my problem is four or five weekends ago, I went to this party and met up. A buddy of mine and I met up with these three chicks, and we, the three of them and the two of us sort of hit it off. They're having a great time. And uh, we ended up, they all ended up coming back to our place at the end of it. And um, I hooked up with one of them, who then um, I tried calling like a couple days later, like four or five days later, um, just before the next weekend. And she wouldn't return my calls, or when it, I did get a hold of her, she said she was busy. So she basically wanted a one-night stand from me. And then... Um, very nice. Week. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and then last weekend, I called her uh, to see if she wanted to, you know, just to hang out. And um, she wouldn't answer my, her, I'm sorry, she wouldn't answer my call. Sounds like so, she's not interested in you. It's, yeah, it's, it sounds like it. But I, I, got, I got what I wanted, so I'm not too. Right. Upset. And then um, a few hours later, after I called her that last weekend, um one of her friends called me because I had given, we had all exchanged numbers. So right. I guess what must have happened is that she had been talking with her other two friends and basically had probably told them, yeah, I'm over Eric, that guy I met at the party, whatever. It was just a one night thing. So then they probably, one of the one who called me probably thought, okay, well, if she's not interested in him, maybe I'll see if he wants to hook up or whatever. Because she called me and she was really flirty. You know, saying like, "Hey, baby, how's it going? What are you What are you up to tonight?" And I couldn't um, hang out with her that night, so I told her, "You know, I'll give you a call next weekend and see if you want to hang out." But the problem is, I can't remember her name, and I was wondering if you maybe had any uh, advice or techniques, maybe like a line to pull to get her to. You mean when you see her in person or when you talk to her on the phone? E either or. Well, when you see her in person, one of my oldest tricks in the book is to claim that my driver's license picture is horrible. Okay. It's the worst driver's license picture ever taken. Now, it really isn't. I've right. seen worse. But I have a very hard time remembering people's names for a very specific reason. And uh, that is that I'm a, I'm a freak with a high IQ who can't remember um, a person's name. I can remember how many letters are in their name, but how, not their name itself. And this is... I'm sorry, this is what I'm supposed to be saying to her, or are you just... No, 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 I'm telling this part to you. Okay. No, no, so when you see her, you tell her, uh, my my driver's license, I have got the worst picture, the worst. Offer to show it to her. Right. Tell her, my, I guarantee you mine is worse than yours. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Then you show it to her, then you ask to see hers. Okay, that's brilliant, perfect. <laughs> um, but in case... She, now, in case she's afraid you're going to see her date of birth. <laughs> uh, 
Um, or what I was going to say was in case she asks me if or if I do, in fact, remember her name, because last time she called me, I just said, hey, how's it going? And I think she might have got the idea that I don't remember. In case next time I call her and she asks me, like, do you even know what my name is? Do you have any advice to give me on how to There are the ways. Phone? Well, I mean, if you're willing to pay a few bucks, uh, you can run a check on her uh, her cell phone number using a website like uh, 800ussearch.com or... 800ussearch.com. Yeah, or intellius.com. I'm sorry, what was it? Intellius with one L, I-N-T-E-L. Intellius.com. Okay, that's an option. I-U-S. And uh, for like 10 bucks, you can give them uh, her phone number. And uh, they will tell you what her name is or the name of the person paying for the phone. Okay. And one more time. And don't be too shocked if you see the name of somebody else, like a guy's name or something, because many women don't pay for their own cell phone. The ex-boyfriend, the ex-husband, the daddy pays for it. Right. So sometimes you won't get the result you want. Right. But one more time, could you spell out the website name for me now that I have a pen handy? <laughs> I'm sorry. You know Intel, like the computer chip Intel? Yeah, Intel. And I-U-S. I-U-S. Dot com. Excellent. Um, and uh, I guess I'll try that, and then if she doesn't even bother asking me if I know over the phone, I'll just use your driver's license technique in person. That sounds perfect. Yes. Thanks, Tom. I really appreciate it. And uh again... A lot of respect. I love your show. Been listening for a really long time. And could you take me out with a bong hit? I certainly can. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. This is plenty of words in my vocabulary. You are not even I, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill sluts. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Like It Show. The Tom Likas Show, wide open telephones at 1 800 5 800 Tom. This is Helen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Long time, first time. It's Thank great you. to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm really, really, really excited to be on the show. I listen to you all the time. It gets me through that uh, four or five traffic coming back from auditions all the time. <laughs> Uh, I love you, love you, love you. I had, you know, I had to call in. I just had to call in. You were talking about women comedians and that there's not good-looking ones. And you know, you're you're right. It, it's it's like a handicap, you know. In, well, in that's what I'm saying. Even I, I, even if somebody was the funniest comedian in the world, if she was hot. Uh, that would distract people. Everybody's wife or girlfriend who was sitting right. with them while they were watching comedy would kick them under the table. And when you think that's funny, so that's what you like. Right. Exactly, exactly. And, I, you know, I've been on the road for years, and I can tell you, I mean, I, I remember one time I worked with uh, Jimmy J.J. Walker in Vegas at this club, and I wore this, like, mini satin mini skirt. And after the show, he said to me, uh, no one's listening to a word you're saying. They're just trying to look up your skirt. <laughs> and I was like, I, I thought he was a real jerk, but then I thought, well, maybe he's right, you know. And there was no answer, you know. If I dress like a man, that didn't, you know, help. But it just, uh, it really, it, it was. It kind of got in the way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's an accident that there's no a female equivalent of Chris Rock. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But, you know, I mean, I think uh, I think there's, you know, I've, I've found ways to make a living within the comedy world. I've actually been, uh, you know, touring with a, a couple other women this last couple of years uh doing a show and we talk about you know motherhood and things like that and our audiences are all women predominantly women and then it, it doesn't matter as much because you're you know you're not but when it's a man and women in the audience on a date well the main reason a guy takes a girl to a comedy club is because he wants to get something afterwards it's like a real you know it's a sexy thing to do for a date and then you don't want to see a girl cuter than you going on stage yeah yeah right. no I, I i know that's true and yeah. I know it has uh, it has handicapped some people. I talked about it earlier. I I dated a woman one time who was an aspiring comedian who was a ten plus, 
There was no yeah. way. There was no way that was ever going to happen. Yeah, well, that's not me. I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near that. I mean, I've managed to make a living, oh, these many years. So, but I, I, I definitely feel it, and I know what you're talking about, and I agree with you. And I also want to tell you, you're a million percent right. That guy, if he's not on the list, she's on MySpace trying to fill her numbers. Because when you're a new comedian, it's ex- you're exactly right. It's, you just have to get people in order to go on stage. That's, you're absolutely right. If he's not on the list, she could care less if he comes. She's it's just, just like the stripper who gives a guy his, her business card or a, a exactly. cell phone number. Oh, call me. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, let me tell you something else. There's not a big difference between being a stripper and a comedian. You know, <laughs> you go on the road. I'm there with wheeling my suitcase through the airport with the other strippers. It's the same freaking job, except there's, there's no pole. It's a mic stand. That's the only difference. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it really, honestly, you're just louder. That's it. Yes, I understand. <laughs> That's the only difference. Um, <laughs> you're talking is what you're doing. You're talking. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Helen, thank you so much. I, it was a, it was a thrill to talk to you, Tom. I'm a big, big fan. Well, thank you. You can uh, take me out any way you like, man. Well, I always go old school. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Here comes Eric on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Going great. Man, uh, to, now uh, I'm just talking about to Dino about you know this girl that I was banging, right? Who's no? who's that in the background? Is that the radio? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry. I just didn't know I was going to be on yet. Well, if you were listening to the phone instead of the radio, you would know. Yeah, I know. I was just listening to your show, man. You know, I love it. And then I. But was... if you were listening to the phone, you would know it was you. I was being patient, man. Just bear with me, man. But I'm now sorry. I have to be patient. No, I'm sorry. You're doing your thing. I love your show, man. So, anyways, could I get back to the story? Fifty seconds in, sure. Go right ahead. Cool. Uh, so I was. Uh, um, I'm with this girl, right? And uh, you were with a girl. I'm with this female. Uh, it says here on the screen you had a girlfriend. Exactly, I, I'm with that girl. Oh, why, why didn't you call her your girlfriend? Because you knew I was going to give you crap about it, right? Oh, well, you know what? I know what I was uh, looking forward to. You know, talking to you. I know you. You were going to. Why don't you just tell me the truth? No, I am telling you the truth. You said you were with this girl. No, okay. no. You had a girlfriend at 17. You had a girlfriend. Okay, I had a girlfriend. What, what do we tell you about having a girlfriend at 17? You should not have a girlfriend well, at all. But you did it anyway. Hey, hey, I need for you to get mad at me, man. Give me back my balls, man. Sure you do. I really do. So, look, man, this girl that I'm, I was with, I got her sister pregnant, man. Oh, good work on that, Ace. So let me understand something. Why do you need to have a girlfriend if you also need to bang other people like her sister? See, this is the thing, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to approach that situation. No, no. I'm approaching you, and I'm asking you. If you need a girlfriend, why do you need other people? I don't need other people. I just like um, humping them and dumping them. If you like humping and dumping, why do you need a girlfriend? You know why? Because there's that one girl that I do really, really like, man. You don't like? Did you you like her when you were busy humping her sister? You know what? I like them both. They're both hot. Yeah, but you called one your girlfriend. Yeah, but you know, because I was trying to get at another one. You know what I mean? Well, now you now you got them both. Yeah, good work. Aren't you proud of me? No. No, I'm what? not. Tom. Because you because you're 17, and now you're gonna have to pay child support, rendering you a loser for the rest of your life. But uh, look, you know what? Um, I'm doing pretty well in the world, man. I mean, really, at 17, what are you doing? Um, well, actually, my father owns his own business, so you know. Oh, so your father is doing well. Sounds like you're not doing much of anything except knocking people off. The Tom Likas Show.